right, and the recording has started. Hi, guys. Hi, good to Hi. see you. Um, and for those who don't know, who are just tuning in this week, I'm Lauren, and I'm the Director of Development at Passion Flicks. I'm Allie, I'm the Director of Marketing and PR. And I'm Tosca, I'm the Founder and CEO at Passion Flicks. Awesome. Uh, how are you ladies doing this week? Good. How are you Great. doing? It's uh, it's fun to see you remotely. Yeah, good to see you guys too. It was awesome <laughs> having uh, Jodi Alamalpas join us last week. That was really great. Mm -hmm. That, that was, was so amazing. Fun. I love working with her. And, and now, um, you know, she's in England. And so as I'm going to sleep at night, her and I are, are WhatsApping and, and talking about different actors and, and all the awesome people that have been suggested so far on our searching for Jesse, and I know we're going to be doing a searching for Ava soon, so um, yeah. excited to see those ones. But yeah, we get to chat about it. Super. So many good suggestions. So many. Yeah. A lot I've never heard of. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And Allie, what have you been up to? Um, been working a little bit on Wicked. Uh, you know, we are going to try to do that cast reveal pretty soon. So awesome. talking to Jennifer. Um, and talking to Taryn, the director, and hopefully we'll have that out very soon. Very exciting stuff. Very exciting. They're amazing cast. So I, I look forward to seeing everyone's reactions. Yeah. Awesome. Same here. And Tosca, you have you finished you finished something with Gabriel's Inferno, didn't you? Another <laughs> step in the process. <laughs> yeah. So we just finished color timing Gabriel's Inferno part one. Um, so that's like a week-long process we, where we adjust the color um, to match everything on the, in the entire movie. And then um, uh, we are now finishing up sound. Um, I think one of the issues that we're having right now, of course, is that we have to do um, ADR or, or dialogue replacement wow. with Julio, and he is in lockdown in, in Rome. So we're still trying to figure that out to get him to a studio, but we will figure it out. <laughs> and... Uh, and then we'll be able to finish the movie. Nice. Oh, that's exciting. Just one yeah. more closer. Um, and we had and Margie's right next door to me over here behind this wall that we, you know, so we're not close to each other in any way. Um, editing part two. Oh, uh, Margie. That's awesome. Oh yeah, she she emailed me earlier today asking if I could um, look up a part in the book where a certain song is mentioned. <laughs> Yeah. On my Kindle and I can just go search. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. the other thing that I was doing this morning is finalizing a lot of our music contracts so that we can release uh, a soundtrack. And so um, it looks like we'll have a lot of our music set by mid to end of June. And so we should be able to release the soundtrack for Gabriel's Inferno. Awesome. Super exciting. I love that. Yeah. Um, and we had, we had someone ask a question on our Emma Chase podcast and they asked, yeah. Uh, do you have a book slash series and, or an author who you would love to work with? And I added on like the who maybe who we haven't had a chance to either reach out to or haven't worked with yet. Um, I personally would like to work with E.L. James. Right. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Incredible. There, there's a goal. Hashtag goals. Definitely goals. That's a good one. My, my ultimate dream is to eventually start being able to do historical romance like Tessa Dare or uh, right. Melody Thomas is one that I recently got into. I have a whole list. Uh, Lisa Kleepass, of course, which we already have for Sugar Daddy book. But Can't wait for that. Yeah. Stuff would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot. Um, I I love I love Laurel and Page. I oh yeah um, yeah love oh, love her. Um, also, I really love Al Jackson. Um, I think I've talked about her maybe on my own personal account here and there, but I love her. She's got really sweet books um i just wrote down and i don't think i knew that <laughs> Good to know. I, yeah i i she's got great books a stone in the sea i think it was the, the first book of hers i read that's part of a series love her um and i recently reread a book that i'd read a long time ago called collide by gail McHugh. but um oh. i don't, yeah she it's a two-part series but those are some authors that i always have in mind very cool, cool. love it I think I'm just going to let everybody know that I'm having a nice glass of white this yes, afternoon. It is, it is late afternoon for us, so that, that makes sense. <laughs> um, and I believe we have lovely uh, Christy Bromberg joining us today, the Yay! New York Times bestselling author, uh, who is the fantastic creator of Driven. Yes. Um, she'll be joining us today to talk all about that 
you know, the first series as well as Field and Crash, which are upcoming with us. So let me admit her into the call now. All right, she should be coming on in just a sec. <gasps> Yay. Hey, Yay! Hi, Christy. All right, can you hear us okay? I can hear you, can you hear me? Yay. Yeah, awesome, hi. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, I'm all shy. I know, I was <laughs> like, you look great. I love the background, it's so colorful. Yeah, it's crazy cluttered office. Your hair is long. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't been able to go to a hairdresser in a very long time. I read somewhere something that, that said, like, the first week was panic buying of toilet paper. Second week was panic buying of, like, eggs or whatever. And now we're at the hair dye and hair clipper stage of panic mm -hmm. buying. Yeah. And then Just about, about there. red hair dye. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I bought red hair dye, but then I told my mom and my sister that I bought it, and they were like, you are not allowed. And I'm like, you can't stop me. But Lauren, I'm about to buy red hair dye. I'm actually really liking the color that's coming out in my hair. You know, I've just, you know, been one of those people that's just highlighted my hair on a regular basis. And now I haven't because I was shooting in Syracuse and the, the day before my hair appointment is is basic was the shutdown. And so we couldn't couldn't do my hair. And now I'm kind of like, oh I'm like, oh, this is what that roots thing looks like. It's not so bad. I think I'm gonna find it's gonna natural. <laughs> You're, you're, you're doing self ombre. Self ombre. Yeah. <laughs> like brown hair to here next, you know, who knows. And Christy, we actually had a founding member who just wanted to comment and say, her name is Pam. She said, uh, your hair is always so gorgeous. I always want to run my hairdresser hands through it. And I'm so excited. <laughs> Everyone is moving forward with the next books. They're awesome and you're awesome. So that was a nice message okay, she had. In the founding I, I don't know. Everyone has this thing with my hair and I don't get it. Like, you have great I, hair. You have, yeah, you have great hair. But it's like funny because my daughter will like want to braid it. She's like, your hair is so thin, mom. I'm like, thanks, whatever. But <laughs> I like, I use like drugstore shampoo and conditioner. Like I'm, I'm just lucky, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Rub it in. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> How have you been, Christy? How have you guys been? Has it been like difficult for you to write or are you writing anything right now? <laughs> Bam, all good. <laughs> well, homeschooling started yesterday. Ooh. Um, <laughs> but like they have 30 minutes that's all they did like, oh, wow. was, like isn't this zoom supposed to be like all day so mama can work no um so I've kind of been pretty relaxed about it like I figured their life is planned and scheduled so much normally from like school to soccer to like homework so I've been really kicked back and my kids I'm very fortunate are test on the upper end of their classes so I figure that's good. let them have a break um, but yeah, it's been really hard to write, you know, you can't really sit down and like think for more than five minutes straight without mom, 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 mom. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, that's been, that's been difficult. And I have a book due May 11th that I really haven't started yet. So, no. um, <laughs> uh, it's going to be, <laughs> be fun, but I usually do better that way. So we'll see. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh, uh, any, any <laughs> hints on uh, the book? Um, it's actually going to be called, I think, tentatively, flirting with forty. Like, I want to do an like uh, what? Older, flirting with forty. Flirting with forty. Flirting with forty. Oh. Flirting with forty. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. I want to do someone, I, and I, it's funny because they're it'd be younger than me anyway. But I want someone like for women our age that like you yeah. know, like so, so yeah, maybe younger man, older woman. Ooh, sounds exciting. Hmm. Yeah, I a like it. Lighter. Yeah, so we'll see. Flirting with fifty would be good too. Yes, that would be. And I was, uh, I was going to start us off by also asking what, where the inspiration for the Driven series came from, because I'm sure a lot of your fans sort of know, but in case anybody doesn't. Out of thin air, like honestly. Um, well, out of college, I wrote, I had, I, I wrote a book, um, and I had some interest from a, a, I really was like not in the right mind frame to have someone pick my stuff where I work apart. I was just like, yeah, you don't like it, whatever. Um, <laughs> So, and at that time frame, I kind of had a story about a woman who worked like in a social, in a, in a home with kids. And I knew there was like a backstage meeting where they ran into each other, but that was like as far as I'd gotten. And then I started reading, you know, 50 and uh, Jody Allen and Ray Miller. And I started reading all those books and I had three kids under the age of five. I was desperate for brain stimulation. Um, and so my husband traveled like 25 days out of the month for work. And so I was home wow. a lot with kids. So one night I said, screw it. I'm just going to write a book. You know, I, I could saw them doing it. Why couldn't I? And Colton was there. And so it all kind of started around Colton. And then it just kind of happened. Like no main like inspiration, but. Yeah. 
it's really and cool. here we are for the here we are. Series. Yeah. craziness yeah because we adapted the first of the series driven back in 2018 and it was a huge hit obviously and uh would you be able to talk about a little bit about what it was like getting your book adapted by us crazy <laughs> I mean, you know, everyone says, oh, you, it's, it's, you don't understand what it's like, and you don't. Like, I remember when we were at the house, and we did our first scene when um, Casey walked in as Colton in the black, it was like a warm-up. Oh, scene. yeah, in the, the black in the room. Yeah, and we finally got him to shave his hair and his beard, so it was like, never, <laughs> we had, it took forever for us to get him to shave his hair and his beard. Yes. And yes, he walked yes. in the scene with Xander, and it, it was just like, oh! like, I got tears in my eyes. It was crazy. So, oh. um. That's, it's surreal. I think that's the biggest word you to use is how surreal it is to yeah. see these images in your head be brought to life and to be brought to life in a way that like resembles so closely the book. I think that was what was, you know, there wasn't like a time when I was like, oh yeah, that's not going to work. You know, it was like, holy crap. Like, yeah. That's a really awesome compliment. Thank you. That's I great. That. What was, what was your favorite scene from the film that we... So this is a hard one because my favorite scenes have to do with things that happen behind the scenes. Mm. So like a little bit of that. <laughs> frogs. I mean the frogs. <laughs> forget the frogs. Uh, in there's this, in, in the in the blooper reel you have some of the frogs, but when we were in the house in Malibu, the frogs were so damn loud. And like I remember everyone's out there with flashlights shining them on the frogs so that we get the scene film. Yeah, the PAs had umbrellas like slapping yeah. the frogs. <laughs> or um, like in Santa Monica Pier, Casey asked for an apple and he bit an apple and right before he had a kissing scene with Olivia, and she's like, wait, I'm allergic to apples. And like, oh, remember that? Like, those are the kind of things I remember watching it. And so it kind of, watching it for me takes away from like the movie, but it's more because I'm thinking of everything that happened in, behind the scenes. Yeah. That type of thing. So for me, it, it's, it's fun to watch it because I'm remembering like I was fortunate to, enough to be there a lot during filming, so to see all the stuff behind the scenes. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it was great to have you there with us while we were filming, because just for me, every single time we'd film something, I'd kind of look at you, and be like, okay, I, I think we got it. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I think Laura and I had a bonding moment in our uh, first sex scene take that we were in there. <laughs> like, okay! <laughs> It was, yeah, oh it was my God, a, there's 13 of us in this tiny room and it's getting really awkward here. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a day where we were filming like a, the big dance sequence on the dance yeah. floor with a bunch of extras. That was at the end of Mother's the Day. It was at <laughs> the beginning of the day. We had that first uh, hotel like bedroom scene and mm -hmm. I was the only female AD. So I was the one requested to be in the room, like helping keep the shots going. Like ADs keep time during the day. So I was there to help with that. And then during it, because they're on the bed right there and you can't not see anything even though like, I can't come back into a wall any more than looking, I am. I was looking at the floor and Christy was looking at me. We were both trying not to laugh and trying not to like make a noise. <laughs> and just that says, cemented our friend that was cemented our friendship forever. Yeah. yeah. And there's me I'm like and the hand goes down the face yep. and down the neck and down. No and when you said and cut. <laughs> and cut. And cut. <laughs> They weren't cutting. It was great. <laughs> I got too into it. It was funny. It was funny. It was good. It was, and it turned out to be a really great scene. So that was yeah. good. Yeah, it's lots I'm of good blushing over that. And I thought, with that being said, we could we should address the elephant in the room, which is that uh, for those of you who don't know, Casey will not be returning for the role of Colton in the next uh, two movies. And uh, Christy and Tosca, would you be able to tell us a little bit about? The new Colton, or like, what can you tell us, <laughs> if any? Tell me, Tosca. Who? Oh. <laughs> um, yes, uh, it is unfortunate. Uh, and Casey, you know, congratulations to him. Got a series, and and he'll be off filming in Canada for the next couple of years. And um, and uh, so it was a little tricky for us to get him to come back to um, the Driven sequels. Um, so there's there's more to that, but um, we're, we are moving on, and we have found another. Um, really awesome um, guy. I almost said his na name. <clears throat> I don't. don't. I will come and, after uh, you. Uh, but a really, really great guy. And he, um, he, he's read all the books. He um, is is really enthusiastic about the entire um, series, about passion flicks, about uh, the driven series in general. Um, the the fandom around it and is excited about being involved and the wonderful thing 
um, was that him and, and Olivia have, have really gotten along well. And she's sitting there and she's talking him through what it's like to be in the driven movies and um, part of the driven world. And, and each, each, um, each, each conversation was like, they're very enthusiastic. We will be there for them. And he's like, this is going to be great. Sounds great. Okay. Sounds good. And he has this incredible smile. So I think um, it's going to, he's going to, he's going to play it really well. His beautiful, playful attitude. So, you know, drunk Colton's going to be really, uh, really awesome. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Yeah. He's very cute. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is very cute. The whole office did stop working for a while. I almost passed um, out. Well, I, it wasn't fair because he did. How, what did you guys do as a chemistry read? He came in and he did what? What scene did they read for the chemistry read? They actually read the entire script. So they oh. weren't supposed to. They were supposed to just come in and just like, just um, read, you know, a couple of scenes. And instead we started with scene one. And then I was like, I, I had multiple meetings set that day. We were the, here from 10 o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon, just reading through every scene, discussing it, going through the book. And, um, and then the two of them kind of like, you know, nodding at each other and, and, and chatting about the scene um, and how they would, how they portray it. And um, so, yeah, it, it ended up being a, a very long chemistry read. Um, but it was good. A lot of, we really have to have sex on a car? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the most hilarious thing. And when you get to know him, I was like, okay, so yeah, and this is when you're going to have sex in the car. And he's like, okay, that's no problem. I've done that before. And I was like, hang on a second. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> hang on. I'm sorry. What? And he goes, oh yeah. So no, I, I figured that out. Listen, and I can't say where he's from because you guys are going to find him. He's like, where I'm, where I was brought up, that was just kind of like the kind of things that you did for fun. So yes, I <laughs> had sex like that before in a car. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's convenient. So I guess you will just, um, no yeah. action lessons for that day. You yeah. want to show us how it's done then. You can direct the scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he does racing and he, it's it's like he's um like he's a Colton come to life. You know, he he's he's actually actively involved in besides sex on a car, he's actively involved in so many <laughs> of the other things that are listed uh, physically <laughs> that the character does. I'm not gonna have that image out of my head now. Oh, like, oh, I know. <laughs> Thanks for that, Tosca. And I know what he looks like, so it's just gonna be right there. <laughs> I have no doubt that he's probably listening to this. So I'm sorry that I gave that away, but um, thank you for your um, help in coordinating the scene. <laughs> <laughs> and and Ali, we had uh, a founding member, Christiania. I think if I said it right, um, asked if we were gonna get a teaser reveal at all for Colton at some point. And I know that I think you and Tosca have one planned or an idea. Yes, Tosca came up with a great idea. badass idea. Yeah, so yes, we will. And we'll have it out a little closer to filming, but it'll be worth the wait. Tosca's idea was just great. <laughs> You'll love it. It'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be geeky and fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then, uh, so yeah, the plan is still to shoot Fueled and Crash this year pending COVID-19 and, and how that all pans out. Um, right, Tosca? Yeah. That's the hope. Yeah. Yeah, well, our start date for shooting both movies back to back was April 6th. Um, <laughs> so not, not convenient time. We, we uh, were, were in our first week of prep for the movies when, when we shut down. So um, as soon as we come back, again, this is, this is all everybody's availability and weather dependent and all the other things that have to be done. But um, the idea is that we will try to film, we'll try to pick up as we can or almost immediately, you know, in the same order as we can when we come back. But we also have to film this man and that one scheduled for the only um, summer weather in Europe. So we would, we will either try and shoot it just before this man or just after, but it will be filmed this year for sure. Okay, cool. Um, and as soon as, as soon as possible. Right, as soon as possible, no, totally. <laughs> and I think everybody understands that and is, and they're being very nice about the fact that COVID has changed a lot of how the industry will work. It's not like uh, there's a so choice. thank you for your patience. And yeah, there's, there's not a choice. choice. <laughs> it's really, it's wild. Um, um, Christy, are you going to be with us on set the whole time? I will try to, yes. Thank you. Yay, because that was, that was really fun. There was one moment, because um, I was, I think I was uh, the third AD on that, or like, you know, the second, second AD on that, 
and I'm in charge of wrangling a lot of the kids when they were on set. Uh, and Christy at one point looked over at me and she was like, so are you like happy I wrote a lot of kids into the book? Or are you, <laughs> is that not cool? I was like, no, Christy, it was really great. Thanks for this. <laughs> Another bonding moment is all the kids that you have in the book. Um, and Christy, without giving spoilers away, uh, what scene from Fueled are you most looking forward to uh, see on screen the most? Or this is a spoiler warning. You can spoil. We'll just spoil. Yeah. Um, I have a soft spot for Bex. Oh, yeah. So all the romance moments. um, I'm looking forward to those. And Bryce is just such a cool guy. Like, I look forward to that. Um, You know, Fuel, that book has so many moments in it. Um, I'm, like, going through them in my head. And it's funny enough, like reading the script, I was like, oh, I forgot that happened. Oh, I forgot that happened. I mean, it's been like seven years for me since right. I wrote it. Um, definitely the bromance moments, the Colton's drunk moments, I think <laughs> funny. Um, and then, see, I have to get, I get a lot of books confused. I get, <laughs> I get the scenes mixed up, so I'm trying to think, like, between Crash and Field, like, which ones? Um, and we, we have, have, the, we have the whole Vegas bit. Yeah, the ending. On the ending. That's my favorite ending I've ever written. Amazing. That ending, uh, that is going to be so intense. Four words. So awesome. Yeah. I, I, I visualize it so much in my head, and we have some race teams that are um, going to be helping us, and then we have a whole visual effects team that's helping us with this one as well, because it's obviously a much bigger movie with mm-hmm. um, all the racing. And um, I can just, I just see Olivia as Riley. I just see her the reaction that she has during this, um, during this thing that happens at the end. I don't know if I'm going to say, but this <laughs> and, um, uh, and just, just people running by and just smoke and you just yeah. see this person's face and you hear their words. Um, yeah. I think one of the other scenes is, is that I want to see, well, obviously is the scene before that, that before the ending happens yeah. uh, between the two of them, but the scene where there's a fight in the hotel and yeah. she, like walks out afterwards and he chases her like there's a scene there that that is probably like one of my favorite scenes that i wrote, wrote like in that book and so i just seen it just i mean all of it it's so hard to pick like because there's so many parts of that book that i forget till i read it and for me there were like specific parts of my life like my son was really young then and he loved spider-man and that's where the whole i Sp- spider-man batman i mean because i it was on ad nauseum on my tv while i was writing at the kitchen counter and so just little parts of my life are in that book that people don't realize. So for me, it's, yeah. it'll just be cool to see the whole thing. And that's such a, but that's such a beautiful element to the whole series is these, um, these little things that, that kids can hold on to, to give them strength and give them hope and in the, these dire circumstances. And I think that's just, a, that's a really beautiful and very original element from, from my side of things, not knowing too much about that world that you added. Thank you. You get all shy. Um, and we have a couple of questions from founding members as well Um, Patty asked what did you learn from being on the set of Driven that you will take with you onto sets of Fueled and Crashed so for me something that I learned in the whole process is how you can say so much with so little Hmm. it's actually changed how I write now wow Um, well especially because those books were my first book so I was really wordy and there's a lot of repetition and since then I've, I've evolved as a writer but for me you know, I remember when I first got the script for Driven, I'm like, you're missing all these stuff. And, and I was like, just trust me. Like, I don't need it written down. Like the actors get it. Um, so for me that, and um, what did I learn? How many people it takes to make everything work. Like I was astounded and so grateful for everyone behind the scenes. that I don't even think people realize how many people are there. Um, you know, just the grip guy holding the stupid microphone for so long. I'm like, dude, you must have really good shoulder and arm muscles because I'd be like dying. <laughs> um, I mean, just there was, there were so many parts to the, to the machine that to me, that was so fascinating to watch. I remember at one point, Tusky, you're like, will you stop Christy? Cause you're just going to kick me out of the job next time. Cause it was so, it was such a learning process for me. Um, so I'm excited to get back into it just for the, the behind the scenes stuff that I got to learn. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it is, it is, there are a lot of people that are involved in each individual day of making, of bringing everything together. Um, and 
we're so grateful to all of those crew and, and we're very fortunate at Passion Flix that so many of the crew that we work with um, for, uh, work with us on, on all of our films. Um, and, uh, and, and was, uh, you know, the, the first day that you arrived, which is day one at, at the, um, at the, fan, at the home, yeah. um, our, our first AD was there and he was new. He'd never worked with us before. And he was so concerned. He's like, we've got to get there early. You got to make sure the crew gets to work. We got to make sure. And then we arrived and the crew had already started working before their call time. They were just like going in. He's like, this is amazing. How is everyone just, they're working without me telling them to do their jobs. I was like, oh, they've worked with us on a number of passion flicks movies before. So they, they, they're family. Yeah. And so it's really nice that we have that. And so most of them will be returning for the yeah. sequels. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. great. We actually, we haven't filmed in LA since Driven. <laughs> I know. So, no? Oh, wow. Here and there. We haven't filmed a feature in LA since then because so many other states have either different tax benefits or that's where the book takes place. place. So we need to be yeah. in those weather climates. So that'll be really exciting to get the whole gang back together. Mm -hmm. I know right before April 6th, I was reaching out being like, uh, hair and makeup, are you guys still available? Like, can you come back? And, and our sound guy and all that, all those people, they were like, yes, of course, we'll come back. And yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Damn COVID. <laughs> I know. Um, and uh, Lauren, so getting back to founding member questions, uh, founding, member, founding member named, I can't talk, founding <laughs> member named Lauren <laughs> asked, uh, did the locations used in the Driven series match a lot of what you had pictured or referenced in the book? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the house in Malibu. I mean, yeah. I remember when we first went to that, what is the wooden place, the John Wayne house up above it? Oh, yeah. yeah. The coffee house thing. And I'm like, okay, where exactly are we? And then it was like, oh no, we're going to that house down there. And like seeing it, it was like, ever, like it was perfect. Like absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, the scenes were great. So for the sets were great. Even walking into the house, like walking into it and seeing all the kids stuff, it was just, yeah. I, I was super impressed with how real and lifelike everything came to my imagination. Yeah, that, that house in Malibu, we actually are not sure um, if it was burnt down. Um, I, I think oh, wow. it might have been affected by the fires. So um, we're just, you know, so please, you know, give us, cut us some Great. slack if, if yeah. that happens. <laughs> we're going to do what we can to recreate it, but um, we'll do what we can do. We'll do what we can do. <laughs> oh my God, that's I, can't, I can't prevent fires in Malibu. I didn't even think about that, actually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so... So some, yeah. Anyway, we'll follow up with that and yeah. you know, whatever. Well, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> we we gotta cover. It's the story that matters. Uh, and we had another founding member ask uh, what your cameo was like, if you enjoyed being in the cameo for the Santa Monica Pier scene. <laughs> <laughs> so we only had so much time on Santa Monica Pier. Yep. We can only have so many people on Santa Monica Pier at a time for insurance reasons. And so we were like running out of time. And I think we had one more, we, I got one take and then we had to go on the Ferris wheel then we had to get off before they got upset. So I remember we ran through it one time and I mean, obviously I know the lines because I wrote them, but it's still, mm -hmm. you get worried you're not gonna have them. Um, and I remember walking up and I said something to Casey like, this is nerve wracking. And I will never forget, he said to me, next time you try it wearing a cock sock. I will never forget that. And Tosca yells, and I'm like trying not to laugh and at one point like I have my hand like right here during the whole thing because I was I had my hand like I was covering my mouth laughing so hard so like there's my daughter's like why is your hand like like because I was trying not to laugh so yeah um that's what happened right before that scene and that's why I think I talk super super fast and that because I'm like oh my god get me out of here that's so funny Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, and, and no one knew that at the time and I'm like and I remember thinking god he's talking super slow like I didn't realize like how much they practice talking slow versus I was like no, 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 no. we're done yeah. action cut yeah so yeah so no I don't know what it's like to wear a cock sock thank god <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally fair oh my god Casey <laughs> yeah that's hilarious yeah. Um, and we have another founding member, Lucy, asked, what's the one book you wish you had been a part of, whether it was as a character or as an author? I don't know what she means by that. I'm looking, because had, I've had that. Like, what book I had written or been a part of, like, in the movie? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would love no, to answer it. I'm just not sure what she means. I almost think she means any book, which is even harder to answer. Well, like, Fifty Shades, like that. No. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was going to say, we'll answer this one if we want. <laughs> you know, I think, I think I'm happy with where it, things are. Like, I think everything happens for a reason. And if those movie and those books and all the books before me hadn't done, I wouldn't have done this. So for me, I'm, I'm okay with where it is and where I am. Love it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we had a founding member, founding member named Karen ask, what was it like? Oh, wait, no, I, she was the one who asked about the cameo. Yeah. Sorry, Karen. Uh, and uh, that was the last question I had. Oops, amazing. That was very fast. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that was the last founding member question. Um, can you talk at all about uh, any other of your experiences on set? Um, like what it was like meeting Riley for the first time or seeing Riley for the first time? Oh, she's so sweet. It's ridiculous. Um, I, I love it. I mean, Olivia is just so sweet. It's interesting to me because when we first got the roles, you know, I didn't know much about either actors and I was nervous about her role because I hadn't seen her act. I hadn't seen her. And she owned that role. Like yeah. I just love, and, and I love how she was very unsocial media savvy and like, I kind of talked to her and was like, look, like if you embrace these readers who are so passionate about these books, like they will love you back. And I love how much she like was totally fine with it and like, sure, no problem. Yeah. Like I, I she's just genuinely a really nice human being and I really um, enjoyed working with her. Yeah, she's great. I remember when we did our first read through of Driven um, and um, and we were, I was with Casey and Olivia and, and they were talking and, and at one point Casey was like, I'm really nervous about saying some of these lines to her. I mean, these are like some, some serious lines that, that Colton says to Riley. And Olivia turns and she goes, bring it. Yeah. I'll give it right back to you. Don't you worry about me. And I was like, oh, you're the perfect <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just the perfect answer. It's like, bring it. Yeah. You just try. <laughs> and she did. I mean, every single time that he, that Colton says a, says something that, that normally you'd be like, how could you say something like that? And she's like, mm -hmm. I don't think so. I've yeah. got this. So, um, it was, it was, it's really beautiful to see her portray that role. And I'm very, very happy that she's returning um, because I think that makes that's that's really going to make um, the the next two books just play so well for all of us. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I think the garbage trucks when we were at their house, uh, Riley and um, I can just gonna say Kenzie Patty's house. The garbage it was like garbage truck day and we could not get a, a like an actual scene take because the garbage trucks kept going over and like every every time we yell action it'd be like and the garbage truck comes. Yeah, um, or an airplane. <laughs> or an airplane, yeah. I'm trying to think what else. Um, the beach in Malibu, how windy it was. It's and we windy. couldn't get the dog to come up to them so we had to put peanut butter on Casey's arms. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. There are all these little things, these little behind the scenes things that I, I forget because, you know, we, we, we're used to them on every movie. And I'm like, yeah. okay, so, all right, so we're going to have sound issues because of the, the ocean. We're going to have, the frogs was a new one for me. Yeah. Um, and they didn't check about the um, the the garbage trucks, but even the sound at the um, at the Santa Monica Pier. You know, at the Santa Monica Pier, they're playing music, um, yeah. pop music on the radio there, and so we're not allowed to have that in the movie because you can't listen to a right. yeah. Beyonce song in the middle of a movie. But also, when you're shooting a movie, you're shooting one person's face first, and then you shoot the other person's face, and different music would be playing for each person. So we have to redo all of the sound for that. I think that was something that fascinated me, is how many takes it takes. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, great, we did this scene. Oh, wait, but hold on. We have to do a close-up on each actor's face. We have to do a close-up on their motions and their hands. And it's like, oh, my God, four hours later, you're on the same damn take. Yeah. Yeah, the same scene. It that takes was, a while. That was, in, like, to me, it was mind-boggling. Yeah. I think we can, we can describe it as a, I try to explain. So if a movie is a, a 100 pages, we have to assume that we'll be able to film about four to six pages in one day. And so that's how long it takes to, to film a, a movie, right? It takes four to five, four to six pages a day. And that's roughly one minute per page, unless it's how I film, and then it's about two and a half minutes per page because I like it to be long. 
Um, are we, and you may have answered this before I came on, are we doing the same kind of series scenes or like as we could, it just depends on what happens? I think it, well, the, it's written as a script, right? Yeah. So it's written as script, but just like Gabriel's Inferno was written as a script, all of them and, and um, Driven was written as a script was, you know, Driven was a, a hundred page script or something like that or 96 page script. And it was two hours and 40 minutes. So it should have been a hundred minutes. Yeah. And so, um, so the, the, these scripts are 115 pages. It, you know, it really depends on how the performance is. It could be released as one long movie. It could be really, it, it, the reason why we released Driven as six parts is because it was so long, we didn't want to trim anything and cut it back. And in order to complete that in a, in a timely fashion, we have to break it up so that post-production can handle the small pieces at a time in order to deliver something at all. Otherwise we would yeah. wait so much longer to mm -hmm. be able to deliver yeah. anything. So. And I was asking that because never, I get that question asked a lot. So that's why I was. Yeah. Well, it was never intentional to release yeah. it as, as those parts. And, um, so I think it wasn't like they waited long. I mean, it was three episodes released and then a week and then three episodes released. So it's not it was, like it was, uh, it was two weeks or three weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't like months. No, we, we just had, we had to go back to work. We hadn't finished the second part with our second three episodes. So as soon as we had the premiere of the first episode, I then spent the next three weeks finishing the next three episodes and then we were able to release yeah. it. So, so it just wasn't finished yet. Um, we, we literally finish a movie and it comes like hot off the presses and <laughs> goes right onto the platform or into the, the, the theater. It, it just, um, we don't wait. Um, yeah, so I think it just comes down to how we edit this one together and, and what really, how, how it feels, I think, at the end of the day and how much, how much, how, <laughs> how quickly we can release it. Because if yeah. it ends up being a three hour movie or even a two and a half hour movie, if we break that up into two parts, or if it's three hours, we break it up into two parts, an hour and a half and an hour and a half, um, only so that we can release it quicker. Otherwise, we would release a three hour movie. Very you can't cool. do that with Gabriel's Inferno, it's five hours and five and a half hours. <laughs> it's a lot, 200 page script, it was something, it's very yeah, long. Yeah, it's good to stop, anyway, but yeah, so. Yeah, and I, I actually have one last question for you, uh, Christy, because this was a fun one that we asked Jody last week, um, which was, what has been uh, the high point in your career, I think was the question, and she had a really fun answer. <laughs> okay, what was her answer? <laughs> like, wait a minute, tell me. <laughs> Hers was getting number one on New York Times, which was... Getting like, that phone call. Yeah, she got the phone call, that was her moment. Um, wow. No, putting you on the spot. <laughs> I think all of it. Like this was not supposed to be my life. Like, I mean, for me, it, you know, I released Driven, and I promised I would release a second book in three months, which was insane for me to do because I'm like this new author. Um, and so we, I released Fueled, and it did really well. But I personally messed up the, registering my ISBN numbers with this, so. My agent called me, she's like, oh my God, you sold this many copies, you're gonna hit, you're gonna hit. And I didn't hit because I messed up. So um, that was the point that I realized, oh my God, like this could really happen. Like I had never crossed my radar like at all. So then when Crashed came out and it was insane, um, and there was behind the scenes, there was this big struggle with, should I have sold, like I had offers from publishers to sell the series um, and should I take it, should I keep the series? And I ended up keeping the series because Crash was so long that I knew a publisher was gonna take it, chop it in half and release it as four books. Mm -hmm. and, the readers would, and that's not what I promised readers. And so then they would have to pay twice as much for one for the single book and I just wasn't comfortable with it. So I kept it. Um, and when I, when I released that as an indie, I, I hit number two. I remember everyone calling me saying, you should have sold it, you would have hit number one. And, I'm, and for me, but it was like, I think probably that was the high, but I think every day is like, I get to do what I love. Like I get to have the opportunity to be home with my kids when I need to, you know, like right now. Yeah, that's nice. um, <laughs> but for me, it's like, this was not supposed to be my life. Like this is, you know, so I think every day I, I'm just amazed that I get to do this and, um, when people email me and say such and such a book helped them or, you know, things with watching, there's a scene in Crash when Colton kind of lays everything on the line with Riley about what has happened to him. 
that scene has, I get more emails about that scene. Like, thank you so much. Cause that's happened to me and you've helped me go get counseling. Like that kind of thing. Like there's nothing that can top that. Um, because you don't, you know, words are powerful and you don't expect your words to ever affect people that you've never met, but they do. So it's hard to answer that for me just because I, I'm so blessed to be able to do this and to somehow have some kind of talent to do this um, when it never crossed my radar. So what was your plan? Or did you have um, my degrees are in economics and political science? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I was um, doing accounting and working as a purchasing agent. Nothing wow. to do. Yeah. And so I've never taken a writing class in my life. Um, I just read a lot and I wanted to try something. So That's awesome. That's very yeah. inspiring. I, I hope people like, hear this and they go and do the same thing, like follow that passion. Yeah, I mean, I, let's think I was 35 when I did it, 36. So yeah. So I just tell my kids, see, you can always change your mind and do something different if you want to. That's really cool. Always. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. It's been so nice to see you. I know. It feels like forever. It, it has been forever. I oh, look forward yes. to you uh, spending about, well, about what, four weeks together. And you uh, me, don't worry. A little more than, <laughs> actually, we'll be like seven weeks, seven weeks, six to seven weeks that we'll be spending together this year. So that's, that's going to be an exciting time for us. We'll get to know each other really well. Yeah. You and Lauren will, you know, formalize that friendship for sure. Yeah, in the middle of sex scenes. Great. Exactly. <laughs> Gotta have somebody with me. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. It was hot in there. I was like, whoo, it's hot. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Christy, and I hope you have a good rest of your week. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye, Christy. Take care. Bye. Oh, uh, <laughs> You know, it's just you know so Driffin nice was one of the first ones. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Tom. No, no. I was just saying it's so nice to see these authors that I spent so much time with um, again. Yeah. So, so great. Yeah. But you were saying about Driven? Oh, yeah. Well, it's still just a little surreal to me, even though I've been working with Passion Flicks since August, that I get to talk to so many of these authors because Driven was one of the earlier books that I read when I really started diving deep into the romance genre. So it's still... I still have pinch me moments and that was that was really exciting to talk to Christy. That's awesome. It, it is pretty amazing, right? We get we have this yeah. opportunity um and this this connection. I, for me, I actually can call some of these authors now friends, which is really great and um a little definitely a pinch me moment. It's like, what? I read your work. Oh now I know yeah. you. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like a very much of a starstruck moment, like a oh oh my god. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> It's awesome. Well, awesome. Well, thanks, guys. It's been a really fun, yeah. a fun podcast again. Yeah. Thanks, and, for, uh, thanks for signing on. And I think we'll have um, uh, some more people joining us soon. We're still reaching out to more authors to chat with. And I think maybe at some point we'll get some cast members in too. We'll mm -hmm. try to keep more fun things coming your way. So uh, if you have any comments about today's episode, leave them below. And uh, we will see you guys soon. See you guys soon. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.